Hello all, today we will be going over complex numbers. First, we start off with the definition of a complex number. Any complex number can be written in the form z is equal to a plus bi, where a and b are real numbers, and i is a square root of negative 1. a is called the real part of z, and b, which is the coefficient of i, is called the imaginary part of z. This way of expressing z in the form a plus bi is called rectangular form. Now we will try a problem. So our first problem is to write the square root of negative 9 in terms of i. First, we know that the square root of ab is equal to the square root of a times the square root of b. Now, we can use this fact to solve this problem. So we have the square root of negative 9 is equal to the square root of negative 1 times 9. This is equal to the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 9. Now we know that by the definition of i, the square root of negative 1 is simply i. And the square root of 9 is just Hence, we have that the square root of negative 9 is, square root of negative 9 is 3i. Now, we will try another problem. We want to calculate the roots of the quadratic x squared plus 4x plus 16. So to do this, we will use a quadratic formula. Recall that the quadratic formula is negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. So plugging that, plugging our coefficients into this, we get that the roots of our quadratic are negative 4, because b is negative, b is 4, plus or minus b squared, which is 16, minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is 16. This divided by 2a, which is 2 times 1. This is equal to negative 4 plus or minus. So inside the square root, we have 16 minus 4 times 16, which is, whoops, which is negative 48 over 2. So now we will evaluate negative 48. Using the uh, similar approach that we did in the previous problem, we have this is i times the square root of 48, which is 4i square root 3. So we have that this is equal to negative 4 plus or minus 4i square root 3 over 2, which is, which is equal to negative 2 plus or minus 2i square root 3. So these are our two roots for our quadratic. Now we will try another problem. So we want to identify the real and imaginary parts of the complex number 3 minus 4i. So as we discussed above, for a complex number z is equal to a plus bi, the real part of this complex number is a, and the imaginary part is b. So for the complex number z is equal to 3 minus 4i, our real part is just 3. Our imaginary part is the coefficient of i, which is negative 4. Now we move on to a more challenging problem. So we want to evaluate this sum. 1 plus i plus i squared, so on, up till i to the 20, 20, 
So first, let's evaluate the first couple terms of this sum. We have 1. So 1 is equal to 1. Then we have i is equal to. Then we have i squared is negative 1. And we have i cubed is equal to i squared times i, which is equal to negative i. Hence, we see that the sum of these first four terms is simply 0 because a 1 cancels with a negative 1 and the i cancels with a negative i. And we see that the next four terms, i to the 4 plus i to the 5 plus i to the 6 plus i to the 7 is just i to the 4 times what our first four terms were. And since we found this sum to be 0, we have this is 0 as well. So basically, we see that the sum of every four terms is 0. So, however, we have one term left at the end, i to the 2020. So this means our sum is simply i to the 2020. We know that i to the 4 is 1, and since 4 divides 2020, we have i to the 20 is 1. Hence, our sum is just 1. Now, we will introduce the polar form of complex numbers. So, so now we will look at the polar form of complex numbers. Polar, polar form of writing z is we have a magnitude r times cosine theta, and theta is our argument, plus i sine theta. So r is our magnitude, which is a non-negative real number. And then our argument is this angle theta, which is a so theta is a radian measure from 0 to 2 pi. So if you're not familiar with radians, you can use the conversion. So that a measure in degrees times pi over 1, if you multiply that by pi over 180, you get the, the measure in radians. So for example, 360 degrees, when we multiply that by pi over 180, we get that 2 pi radians. So we write our argument theta in radians. So basically, if we compare this to our rectangular form, we have that a is equal to r cosine theta, and b is equal to r sine theta. r sine theta. Okay. So each form has certain advantages. Oh, and then we have r is equal to the square root of a squared plus b squared. Okay, so each form has certain advantages. Polar form is better when we are multiplying or dividing uh, complex numbers, and rectangular form is better when we, were, we are adding or subtracting complex numbers. Now we will move on to a problem uh, regarding the polar form of a complex number. First, so we have z is equal to 5 plus 5i. So to find the magnitude, or r, of this complex number, you can use a formula. r is equal to square root a squared plus b squared. This is we have a is 5 and b is 5. So this is equal to 5 root 2. Now to find theta, so we can write c as 5 root 2 times cosine theta plus i sine theta. And now we must find theta. So we have 5 root 2 
cosine theta is equal to our a, which is 5. And for our imaginary part, we have 5 root 2 sine theta is equal to b, which is 5. So from here, dividing both sides by 5 root 2, cosine theta is equal to 5 over 5 root 2 equal to square root 2 over 2. And this should be easily recognizable as cosine 45. We also have sine theta is equal to 5 over 5 root 2. This is equal to sine 40. So we have our theta is 45. Hence, we can write our z, which is 5 plus 5i, as 5 root 2, which is our r, times cosine pi over 4 radians, which is equal to 45 degrees, plus i sine pi over 4 radians. This is our theta. And just a quick note that in polar form, cosine theta plus i sine theta is often shorthanded to a cis theta. So this often written as cis theta. So now we move on to complex number arithmetic. So, we start with two complex numbers. Z1 is equal to A1 plus B1I. And Z2 is equal to A2 plus B2I. To add these two, Z1 plus Z2, we add the real parts, A1 plus A2, and then the imaginary parts, B1i plus B2i. This is equal to A1 plus A2. And then B1, we can pull out the i. So we see that in the sum of two complex numbers, the real part is the sum of the real parts of the two complex numbers. And the imaginary part is the sum of the imaginary parts of the two complex numbers. So similarly for the difference, we have this is equal to a1 minus a2 and b1 minus b2 times i. Now we'll look at the product z1, z2. As we mentioned before, it is easier to compute the product given the polar forms of z1 and z2. So first, let's write these polar forms. Uh, we have z1 is equal to r1 times cosine theta1 plus i sine theta1. And z2 is equal to r2 times cosine theta 2 plus i sine theta 2. So to multiply these, you have z1, z2 is equal to r1, r2 times cosine theta 1 plus i sine theta 1 times cosine theta 2 plus i sine theta 2. So I just pulled out the magnitudes to the front. So this equals to r1, r2. So we can FOIL this. So you have a cosine theta 1, cosine theta 2. Then we have an i sine, uh, sine theta 2 times cosine theta 1 plus i sine theta 1 cosine theta 2. Then in this term, we have an i times i, which is negative 1. 
So we get a negative 1 times sine theta 1 sine theta 2. Now, we can uh, rewrite this, just rearrange terms as cosine theta 1, cosine theta 2. Then we'll bring this term over here. So we have a minus, uh, minus sine uh, theta 1, sine theta 2. Now we will combine the imaginary terms. We have a sine theta 2, cosine theta 1, plus sine theta 1, cosine theta 2. And using our cosine and sine addition formulas, this is simply uh, cosine theta 1 plus theta 2, which is this thing, and then plus i times sine theta 1 plus theta 2. Which would be that. Uh, so this is what we get when we multiply two numbers. We get a new complex number whose magnitude is the product of the magnitudes of our two original complex numbers. And its argument is the sum of uh, the sum of our two original complex numbers arguments. Uh, when we divide two complex numbers, we get a similar result. Okay. So when we divide complex numbers, we get a similar result. So using our polar forms from before, we get this is we get it's cosine theta 1 minus theta 2 plus i times sine theta 1 minus theta 2. So we see that the magnitude of uh, the division is the magnitude of z1 divided by the magnitude of z2. And our argument is the difference of the arguments of z1 and z2. So now we will try this problem. So we are given two complex numbers. And we want to calculate their difference, uh, their quotient, and their product. So to start off with the difference, So we subtract the real parts of the two complex numbers. Square root 2 over 2 minus square root 3 over 2. Then plus i times square root 2 over 2 minus 1 over 2. Now to calculate the uh, quotient, as we discussed above, it's easier when z and w are in polar form. So we can recognize z. So first we notice that the magnitude is 1 because uh, we have that square root 2 over 2 the whole squared plus square root 2 over 2 the whole squared is 1. So to write z in polar form, we have z is equal to cosine of pi over 4 plus i sine pi over 4. As square root 2 over 2 uh, can be easily recognized as cosine 45 and sine 45. Now to write w in polar form, notice that w also has magnitude 1. And we can recognize square root 3 over 2 as cosine of 30 degrees. Uh, 
So that would be pi over 6 radians. And sine of pi over 6 radians is 1 half. So we have the argument of w is pi over 6. Now to calculate the quotient to find the magnitude, we first take the quotient of the magnitude, which is just 1 over 1. Then we take the argument as the difference of the arguments of z and w. So we have So our argument is pi over 4 minus pi over 6 radians plus i sine pi over 4 minus pi over 6. And we have that pi over 4 minus pi over 6 is equal to pi over 12 radians. So this would be equal to cis pi over 12. Now we can calculate the product in a similar fashion. The product of the magnitudes is just 1. Then we have cis of the sum of the arguments, which is just cis and pi over 4 plus pi over 6 would be 10 pi over 24, which would be 5 pi over 12 radians. Okay.